Welcome back. I'm Steven and today I'm going to show you how I decorate with colored slips. As you, as most of you know who've been here before, I chew gum during these videos because I have a very dry throat and the gum alleviates the problem, so forgive me for doing that, but I think you might get used to it after a while. Um, first we're going to take a look at the design of the decoration we're going to put on the pot. And I'm just going to show you briefly that I use uh, my tablet for that. And um, it's a very easy way to quickly decide whether you like the colors um, and whether you, where you want to put your various elements. The elements in this particular picture or in this particular pot um, Oddly enough, it's, out, it's sort of fundamentally based on the position of this, this leaf here and this leaf here. They kind of come in a little kind of a yin-yang um, position. And then this is kind of fitted, the, the lilac flowers are fitted to, to balance that and, and on the other side as well. It is symmetrical this way and this way. And, um, but there are a few other things I, I learned by laying it out first. I learned that I wanted to leave enough space here for this green leaf to move into because I really love it when things can more or less overlap or fit into each other. Uh, so that's, and that's the same thing over here, although I didn't leave enough space, so I'll remember to do that. I'll remember to leave enough space um, here for this leaf. But the fundamental flow of the, of the design is this leaf and this leaf flowing into it. And, um, and then I've done a few, made a point of a few things, such as I want my lines, my black lines overlapping from one color into the next. I want them to go that way um, so that we don't have things looking too stilted. I want to fill in on the border with just little wisps of, oh, I don't know, little flying things and bugs and various things that help to fill in the, um, the space. And those, oops. Those are the primary um, attributes that I have apart from the colors. And it's a great way to check out whether you're able to, um, whether the colors fit nicely. And these are the colors I'll be using. It'll be a bluish green, a lilac, a yellow, and a black. So that's that. And here's where I'll be working. These are um, my colors. This is the yellow, this is the green, this is an amico lilac, and this is a black. Now, these are based on um, recipes that I'll show you uh, at a later time. Um, Wayne Bates, uh, this is his green, this is his black. Uh, the only changes I've made is that I've used Frit, one, frit 3124 um, because he fires to cone 6 and uses a different Frit. I think he uses 3134. Uh, but anyway, I use 3124, and the yellow is based on an Ostrom, Walter Ostrom's basic slip with 35% uh, uh, 6481, which is a bright yellow, and 6% 6032, which is a uh, coral. And this is no longer available, so I'm going to have to try and substitute that for, uh, with something called um, Precio Dimium, I think it's called, a uh, yellow, and uh, I think it'll be fairly similar, but I'll have to test that first. And so that's 100 grams of the Ostrom White Basic with the 35 grams of, um, of a bright yellow, 6481, and the Coral, which is number 6, or which is, um, sorry, the Coral is, is number 6032, but it was 6 grams. And then that's just the Lilac Commercial Stain, and that's it. And the brushes. I'll be using this one to put on the yellow because it goes on fairly thickly on the rim. And this is my fine detail brush for some of the little black marks. This I'll be using for the green because it gives a nice pointed end to the green. And that's just picked up in a, a, a little Chinese art shop in Chinatown in Victoria. And um, they're fa fairly reasonably priced and pretty good brushes. This is going to be for the black liner uh, when I have to move around the, um, the leaf and it gives me a little more pigment in there. 
This one is for the, um, this is a very fine brush, beautiful brush. Um, and it's made by HJ, it's called the HJ uh, Series 170 number two. And it's for putting on the lilac. And I will just dab that on for that. And this is for the small green, the small green part of the leaf. And um, so those are the brushes I'll be using. And um, I'll just go and get a plate. So I've moved in a lot closer. So you can see more clearly what I'm doing. Um, this is my brush that I'm using for the slip. And this is my little slip container. Um, I already uh, dipped this brush in water and, and squeezed it out a little. It's always a good idea to do that to a brush just before you use it. It helps the um, pigment penetrate the brush better. And uh, this is a very easy part of the process, although you do want to continue to be careful. Um, you're just going to brush that on in a very luscious way. The slip can go on nice and thick. Well, when I say thick, I'm only comparing that to underglaze, which is applied to bisque, which is usually goes on very thin. And sometimes if you want to get complete coverage, you actually have to put on three coats. Um, slip is not is, is much thicker, so you won't have to do that and it tends to give a really nice coverage, if that's what you're looking for. So you shouldn't be able to see any of the white slip underneath. I might just go around one more time just cautiously. I don't want to over, over apply it because then I'm over wetting it. And um, that is not a good idea because then you're going to add too much water to the rim. You won't be able to take it and it will, um, it's going to do that. And it will uh, crack on the rim. And you might not see the crack right away, which is really unfortunate. But, um, because then there's nothing you can do about it until you've put more, even more work into it. Okay, that's the first one. Now I have three that I'm going to work on. So I'll just move this one out of the way and let it dry. Because I won't be able to apply the... Um, I won't be able to apply the rest of the decoration to that rim until that slip has dried enough that it's set in place and doesn't smudge. So I've just done a few things off camera. I mixed up I mixed up a little bit of my plain white slip because I, I have to put some lilac on the rim according to my design layout. But lilac won't go very nicely on top of um, the yellow. It will probably it'll be okay, but it will be darkened by the yellow. And I'd like it as bright as possible. So what I do is I, um, I put some white slip on first. It takes a little extra time, but it's worth it. You have to get it on fairly thickly. And you don't have to worry about it being perfect. It's going to go through a lot of um, there are going to be a lot of things to distract the eye. Um, put the next one on at a bit of an angle just to make it a little different. And I'm just dabbing the brush down. And that's that side done. Okay, so the lilac is now all stirred up. And it's just a matter of um, putting it on. The lilac has to go on very thick, as thick as I can, because it tends to be a color that gets weaker as you fire it, as the, the glaze that melts over top of it seems to um, eat into it a little bit and dissolve it. And um, that can just 
make it very weak. And you don't want it weak. The whole point of the color is that this color should stand out a little bit. Okay, we're back again to do the green, and um, the green is a beautiful, beautiful um, slip. This one is based on um, Wayne Bates, and um, just trying to get you to see the consistency of it. It's um, it's very important that you get on, get the application on. Not too thick and not too thin. If you get it on too thick, this one will, will turn out black. And then too thin, it's just washed out and you don't see anything. So I'm afraid that's an experience thing and you just have to learn, learn what's right. Um, but the color comes from copper carbonate in this particular one. And um, it's not, um, it's a very soft, it melts into the glaze in a very soft, muted way. It gets a certain amount of depth to your picture. Um, as opposed to a stain that tends to be very flat and on the surface. And I've never really liked pictures that look too much on the surface or pottery where the design is too much on the surface. Um, it's one of the reasons I like to put a clear glaze over top of my slips so that there's a certain depth to where the color is. It's behind the glaze. As opposed to Maiolica, which is very beautiful, but I've never had any luck with it because it always looks very much on the surface for me and uh, it doesn't seem to suit my style as well so but there's some beautiful myola out there so the brush I use is this one it's the, it's that Chinese brush that is used for calligraphy and um, you can see you get an idea of the consistency when you start to dip the brush in it and um, you st I'm trying to get my hand out of the way here so you can see that there's a little bit of a, it's dropping off a little bit, but not running off too fast. And now I will be using that design idea, which is that the, the leaf is going to be flowing in a kind of a curve right into the middle. And that's basically what that did. And I look at the thickness now and I say, it's pretty good. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more water. I use a little dropping tool. This is very nice for dropping water in. in it so you don't put too much in at any one time. And because uh, over thinning is always a problem. You have to evaporate it out. It just takes time. So I think that's good, and my leaf, uh, the next brush stroke, just sort of goes and complements it like that. And I think my thickness is, is okay. Um, I'm going to keep my eye on it because I'm just uh, using this for the first time in about a week or so. And I think it dried out a little bit on me, so I'm just keeping my eye on it, but that's okay. And by the way, too thin is better than too thick in the case of this green. Too thick and you've got a black leaf and that doesn't look right. So we'll just do this again and keeping in mind that our curves are supposed to be kind of complementary. There, that one's okay. And we'll just go like that. And then we want to do the little leaf that's going to come in here. I'm going to wet my brush just to, it helps the flow of the pigment. And then I'm just dabbing it on a towel to get the water, most of the water out, but it was damp now. And we're going to put the next leaf on. And it's a fairly simple leaf. It just goes like that. I like that. And again, I'm checking my thickness. It looks okay to me. 
I don't think it's too thick. And um, it's not too thin. I think it looks just right. And they're going to sort of, they have to sort of come out of the same area. So I, uh, I sort of look at where my curves are and imagine that the leaf could come out of the same stem. And there we go. Now you can see we've got much more happening and it's much more interesting. When, I, when I've done my black lines, it'll get much more interesting. So that's the green. Okay, so now we're going to put on the little black lines. I've stirred up my black pigment, which is um, Wayne Bates black with 3124 substituted for his print. And um, I'll just start applying it. And now for the final stage, uh, I'll be doing the banding. We'll just put a black band around there and a black band around there. And there's nothing much to it, although you do have to steady your hand and use a banding wheel. But other than that, it's a nice way to finish off the project. Make sure you get enough black on there because you don't want it to, you want it to look confident. And I'm just going to do the inside band. I have to be a little more careful on this one. It's just a little more visible, both edges. And then there are the last little lines to help connect the flowers together. Just a, a little detail, but it really helps tie things together. Don't need very many. Uh. 